Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter Video Series. Hey, I have an old friend of mine. Uh, this has been in my collection for almost a year. It's a Smith Corona Silent Super. And um, it has a near twin stable mate, a Smith Corona non super just the silent version and I wanted to talk about the advantages of having two identical or nearly identical machines in your collection so stay tuned well oftentimes when you're collecting typewriters or a lot of different things you might want to collect uh, different unique uh, specimens uh, in that genre whether it's cameras or slide rules or whatever you like to collect fountain pens typewriters in this case so there is kind of a preferred uh, habit on the part of many people to have unique specimens in their collection but there is kind of an advantage to having two of the same or nearly the same model or brand of typewriter uh, in your collection and today I'd like to talk about that um, so these two typewriters are nearly identical. This one is a Smith Corona Silent. I got this from Townhouse Antiques in Albuquerque it's Central and Morningside, I think. Uh, it being the non-super variety, the main difference is it does not have the key set tabulator. This uh, The super has the tab set and clear. The non-super just has preset tab slugs in the back here. Color-wise, the two machines are very similar. Uh, they're both kind of grayish, but you'll notice the non-super, the gray, is a little bit more on the brown side. And its keys are a two-tone. It has a light green and then a dark green and then a chocolate kind of a brown space bar with chocolate brown platen knobs. And um, the striping on the top of the ribbon cover is sort of a chocolate brown. Whereas the super version is just more of this neutral gray and, and dark green. Uh, so, the difference between these two besides the appearance in Super versus Non-Super is this version is a, a, a Pica size font, this is an Elite size font. Um, this machine that I got from the antique store was actually in pretty good shape. I really haven't done that much with it other than the basic cleaning, degreasing, putting a new ribbon on it and stuff. On the other hand, this super was not so super. This typewriter I got from a Craigslist ad and I can best describe um, the uh, seller's um, abode as a hippie bungalow and it was filthy inside of his house and the typewriter was equally filthy. In fact the case that the typewriter comes in still smells in spite of a lot of a cleaning, a lot of cleaning that I've done and whatever. But so mechanically, okay, mechanically this typewriter has been really pretty good. It hasn't had any issues, but this one here, it's taken me months of tinkering with it on and off. Um, and it's had uh, two nagging issues. One of them is that the lightness of the imprint is just a little too light. And the second uh, is an, a nagging uh, intermittent escapement issue. It's a skipping issue, and it mainly happens after you type a letter A, S, or the uh, quote mark, or the two key. And so these problems have been nagging me on this machine. Um, and uh, so yesterday, which was a Sunday, I once again uh, tackled this problem and I think I got them licked. Let's look at these, shall we? So I've gone ahead and flipped up both machines onto their backs so you can see the, the underneath side of the machines. And one thing you'll notice about these 5 Series Smith Coronas is that the escapement mechanisms, which is here and here, they're very easy to access compared to a lot of ultra portables where they're buried inside the machine. Uh, a lot, everything, you know, like your your ribbon spool mechanism and all the parts of the uh, of the segment and even the spring motor and everything, uh, there everything is easily accessible from underneath, so it makes servicing quite nicely. So, because these are two nearly identical machines, one of the first things I wanted to look at for this skipping problem was to compare uh, the escapement mechanisms. Now, this keep in mind that I had already cleaned and lubricated as much as I thought it needed both machines, um, especially this troublesome one here that was skipping. Now, let me show you, though, the difference between 
the escapements on both of these. So this right here is the the working uh, non-super, just the silent version, and this is the escapement cog. And this right here is the pivoting hinge plate that does the timing for the escapement. Which is called the rocker arm, I believe. And on the super version of this machine, you might notice that it has an extra something on the shaft of the escapement cog. This like stacked washers with some springs in there that the other one doesn't have. Other than that, they were very similar. Now, when I was comparing these machines, I was looking at things like this spring-loaded bent arm, the angle of these arms, how they're bent in relation to all the parts. I was comparing these two machines to get them so that they're nearly identically set up. I made a few minor adjustments to like this arm here, this spacing here, um, things like that. But um, I didn't make any progress until yesterday when I noticed that if you pull the rocker arm here for the escapement, it's operated by this spring here, the spring tension on it. And I noticed that this one was a lot harder to move than the one on the non-super model. And I thought, well, that may have a lot to do with the timing of how the carriage is moving, and etc. And so it turns out that there are two pivot points for this rocker arm, which are a nut and a screw here and on the other side over here. And I loosened those up and I cleaned the pivot points and I left them slightly less tight than they were before. And now uh, this rocker arm moves with about the same degree of ease as the other model does. And the positive consequence of having adjusted uh, the tension on that rocker arm of the escapement for this silent supermodel is that I believe I fixed this problem that has been plaguing this machine for I think what last summer whenever I got this machine so it's been over six maybe nine months at least so I'm excited about that uh, so the problem of course was that intermittently it just wouldn't it would skip after the A or the S or the two quote mark um, why only those three keys that is a good question, but I think it has something to do with the fact that the linkages between the keys and the type bars, uh, they are, I don't know the term, the technical term, but the linkages are made in such a way that the positive action that activates the type bar is also working on the reverse side when the linkage pulls back. It doesn't like freely pull back independently of the rest of the linkage. So if anything in this whole machine is binding, it'll cause other problems. For instance, it could be that, so I did lubricate the hinge points for the, for the linkages. And uh, it could have been a little bit of hanging up on those three keys, their linkages, causing timing issues in the escapement. Because I say, I say everything's interrelated, interconnected, um, and that's one of the reasons why these machines have such a good feel to them, why they feel so tight, because they are tight in both directions. Uh, but anyway, so I believe the timing issue with the escapement is fixed. I have not had any instance of skipping, not even once, since I uh, loosened up those pivot points uh, for the hinge plate, for the pivoting plate on the escapement mechanism itself. Now. Let's get to this other problem that I, has been plaguing me, which is this is an elite font machine. This is Pica, but I noticed this thing had a really faint impression, a lot more noticeably fainter. And I have two other uh, elite machines in my collection, most notably the Hermes Rocket and the little Olympia SF. They both uh, have a nice, very dark imprint. And so it was puzzling me as to why is this thing having such a light impression. And so I wanted to go tackle that, and I did that also yesterday. Let me show you what I found. Okay, here's a close-up uh, shot of the uh, Silent Super Machine. And this piece here, where all the type slugs make their imprint at, is called the Guide Abutment. And on these, uh, this particular model, uh, Silent and Silent Super, there is a spring 
this wire spring in front of the guide abutment. And on this particular model uh, machine, this spring was, was bent out much further out toward the keyboard. Okay. And uh, comparing the two machines is the only way I found it. Is, so what I did temporarily is I pushed uh, the guide abutment back with my finger and started typing, test typing, and I noticed immediately that the impression got darker. So what I had to do was I had to loosen these two screws, take them off, and take off this crescent-shaped plate and the plate behind it. This particular screw here was really difficult to get off, and I ended up mangling the surface of it with a... Uh, pair of pliers, channel lock pliers to get it off, but I got it. There was a lot of hardened grease behind these two plates and also the um, the uh, ribbon vibrator has a little pulley that rides against the back of the plate and I had to re-lubricate that. Anyways, taking it off, so between this these two plates in here there is two little channels here and here that this wire spring is rests into and when I, as soon as I took the wire out I found that this side of the spring was totally straight whereas this side has the two bends there's a bend here and then there's another bend behind it so I ended up simply reforming this spring wire so everything was uh, symmetrical between the two halves and it didn't stick out as far and I reinstalled everything then after reforming the guide abutment spring and reassembling everything here and by the way this spring I believe is used as a shock absorber or dampener for the uh, type bar to help uh, quiet down the machine probably that's what part of the technology that makes it a silent so-called silent machine. Anyways, after reassembling everything, I wanted to check and make sure that my ring and cylinder adjustment is proper. And the ring and cylinder is basically when the type bar comes up, down here it stops against this ring. And then you need where the type slug comes forward, you need about one paper's thickness between the face of the type slug and the platen. So you, you check that with a piece of paper to make sure you have a little tiny gap there. And I do. So I knew that I had the machine properly reassembled and everything. Um, so then it was time to compare the impression that it was making to see if I made any positive impact. And uh, so I have two samples of type here. The top sample is before the adjustment and the bottom sample is afterwards. I think you can tell that Definitely, it is darker now. I have a, a darker imprint, and that makes me feel very good that I made a positive in impression, impact on the quality of this machine. The only thing remaining as far as um, the quality of the typing I see on this machine is the S's. The letter S's are a little bit high compared to the rest of the line of type. And in order to fix that, it will entail me uh, bending the arm, the type bar, a little bit, reforming it, and there is a special tool, typewriter tool, a special wrench kind of a plier thing that uh, was used back in the day for reforming these uh, type bars to adjust the vertical alignments, and I don't have one of those tools, so unless I decide to get real bold and daring with some non- typewriter specific tools, I might just leave that be for now. Well, it made me feel really gratified after months of tinkering with this machine that I was finally able to get it in good working order where I can sit down with it and I can type non-stop on it and not have any issues with skipping and not having a poor quality faint impression. And so uh, I really feel good about it and you know I'm not a professional trained experienced typewriter technician so I only have the experience I can go by from having done a little bit of cleaning and adjustments to these machines I have Ted Monk's uh, typewriter repair Bible as a guide by the way you should uh, look into getting those but uh, the real benefit what helped me here was having two nearly identical models. I could compare how one machine worked versus the other and this is how I was able to find that uh, rocker arm on the escapement it had a little bit different tension on this machine versus this machine. So that was really what did it for me is having two nearly identical machines. Um, in this day where 
especially common machines like Smith Coronas, like here in America, if you find these American-made machines that they made millions of them, it's not that difficult to find two nearly identical models, close enough that you can compare them one to the other if you need to repair them. Um, you might also remember in the previous episode, episode 64 of this series, uh, where we spent a short vacation in Jerome, Arizona, I saw another Smith Corona Silent Super in an antique store in Jerome, and I almost picked it up. It was $28. I didn't get it. But, again, those things are very easy to find, it seems like, if you look. So... Uh, this has been another episode of the typewriter uh, video series. Get yourself a pair of typewriters nearly identical and you can use the one to fix the other. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve and have yourselves a great day.